Hola! In a previous video, uh, we have introduced the IS as a socio-technical system made up of components including IT and mainly software in this case. In later videos and in lectures of this course, we will basically use the term IS or enterprise IS or enterprise information systems or business information systems a lot. And in many cases, we will, uh, when we mention about these terms, we mainly refer to the IT component of uh, IS, and more specifically, the software subcomponent of the IT component. Please bear this in mind. Um, hence, so in order to understand the IT component of contemporary information systems, we need to step back and see how they originated, how they evolved. Okay, now let's start. It all started somewhere in the 60s with the primary need to keep track of inventory, the goods that you produce and the money that firms have or earned. Hence came the inventory management systems and the accounting systems. In 70s, a new term was coined introducing the concept of planning. Now, materials requirement planning, MRP, was the term that was first coined in this era. The objective was to plan the part and product requirements, schedule production processes, and accordingly arrange materials purchasing. These were all along um, the ongoing systems on accounting and general ledgers. Now, in early 80s, the idea of MRP was extended to include the planning of not only on not only material but also the other resources like human, like machine capacity, and and money and like finance. So this even went further to sales planning as well. So now the entire era of such systems is characterized by the term information silo, which has a rather negative connotation. And, uh, okay, let's talk about this problem of information silos before we go further. Um, as organizations become larger and more complex, specialized organizational functions emerge. We call them departments, like sales and marketing, like human resources, production, um, production planning and control, uh, human resources, finance, and so on and so forth. Next, special information systems, special software for each function, for each function, for each department was built or, or developed like inventory control systems, accounting systems, like human resources information or human resources management information systems, production planning and control systems, and so on. But this eventually led to a set of unintegrated systems with duplicate information, which we call silos. Now, the problem with the silos is that the processes, like here, run across the functions or let's say departments, and they need data from all these departments, all these functions. For instance, when you receive an order to produce a product, almost all these systems have to be involved somehow. Okay, we'll see an example in the next slide. Let's start. Let's see how, how information silos work and how they create problems. As our discussion goes, each department or function has its own enterprise system or information systems. Some data has to be stored, stored multiple times in different systems. When, for instance, a customer order arrives, it is registered in the order management system. Next, this information, that is the order and the customer information, has to be transferred to the delivery system. And not only that, but also the accounting system uh, should also be informed so that the accounting also knows that it should expect a payment at some point in the future for this particular order. 
Okay, when the delivery is done, it is registered in the delivery system and this information has to be forwarded to the accounting system so that it knows that the payment should be received for this order. And when the payment is received, uh, again, it is registered and the information is forwarded back to the order management system so that the order can be closed. Now, as you can see, considerable level of data transfer had to take place to synchronize the data in all systems. Now, typically this is used to take place at nights or, or weekends in order not to disrupt or decrease the performance of the system at normal operation times during the workday. As these overnight, what we call overnight batch processing actions were perf uh, performance intensive operations and sometimes were insufficient for the effective synchronization of uh, different systems. And as you can imagine, building and particularly maintaining such systems was uh, not only costly but also difficult and very at our prompt. A change in one system, one of these systems, during a maintenance is likely to influence the synchronization interface between other systems like all these um, uh, red things that's ongoing or uh, exchange between systems. As old as it, as it is, in fact, all these information silos, uh, let's say structure, it is still prevalent, still common, unfortunately, in industry. There are still considerable number of, in fact, companies also in our region better not to give the names, suffering from information uh, silos in our present day right now. Even, it, uh, even in, in fact, in our own university, um, two enterprise systems that we, use, that we use daily, Osiris and Canvas, one for our student information systems and other our learning management systems, are currently synchronized through overnight, overnight batch processing. I hope that would not last too long, but let's see. At least some information related to those systems are synchronized using, uh, using batch processing. For this reason, a change in the Osiris system is seen uh, only after a day in Camas or something. At least that used to be the case uh, last year. And we'll see about that this year. I hope we'll not have that anymore soon. Okay, now that is the case for the information silos. Now. Where were we in this evolution chart? Okay, the issues with the information silos led to a need for an integrated system that will coordinate uh, business processes and share a common data across the enterprise. So the industry met with such a system in late 80s and called it Enterprise Research Planning ERP Systems. And hence the new era started, the era of integration. Now, ERP is essentially one of the most important phenomena in the process of IT adoption in companies in business. It's a reference paradigm, changed the approach to company automation as well as the operational, managerial, and organizational working context. Okay, what has changed? From the functional perspective, uh, the planning aspect that had started with the material and manufacturing requirements planning evolved into the planning of almost all resources regarding the enterprise, hence the name of enterprise resource planning. So this is the functional side. The major novelty, however, was perhaps on the technical side with multi-module integrated system with a common database for all these modules. Now, these modules included, for instance, the finance, the accounting, or finance accounting, usually in a single module, sales and distribution, human resources, uh, post-sales project management, and uh, obviously production planning and control. Now, a significant change was also uh, the, uh, the fact that the implementation of ERP systems went beyond manufacturing companies and spread into many, many other markets, if, if not all, including finance organizations like banking and utilities, insurance, healthcare, and even universities. My first implementation was in a university, for instance. 
Um, if we can visualize the ERP system functional architecture, it would look something like this. Now, at the bottom, we have this shared data repository, which implements a single conceptual model on which the functional, functional modules operate. Like the implementation of such systems typically start with the implementation of core ERP modules, like the human resources or sales and distribution or inventory uh, uh, management systems uh, or finance and accounting. Or these are really the core and one of the first modules that come into any organization's mind when it comes to ERP implementations and continue with many other modules depending on the specific needs of the enterprise. For instance, if you sell something on internet, you deploy e-commerce module. Huh? If your company has a project-based operations, like the typical case for construction companies, for instance, or software development companies, you install a project and portfolio management module, or, or let's say a module set. Um, hence, the ERP has an extensible and modular architecture. Um, besides, uh, with the common shared database on that bottom side, um, um, the, the, the DB, in fact, this database allows a horizontal integration between different modules and, 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 and hence between operational departments, the operational functions. And not only that, that majority of the uh, ERPs in that era also allowed for vertical integration between operational, tactical, and strategic levels of the organization. And this was possible through the use of different views uh, of the data residing in the common database. So we're, we're talking about horizontal integration that cuts across different departments and a vertical integration that cut across different levels, strategy, tactical, and operational level. So it's both horizontal and vertical integration that we're talking about here that was enabled by the inter uh, by the enterprise resource planning system and that was a major major in fact shift uh, major progress in this era okay after erps now after erps the first trend came sometime in late 2000s and called the extended erps or erp2 um, and the first one is perhaps the focus on the value network. The first kind of trend was uh, was focusing on not only on a single organization, but the network of organization, what is also referred to as value network. In ERPs, the initial focus, uh, which is quite understandable, in fact, uh, initial focus was on the integration within the enterprise, within the departments of the enterprise. But there is always a need to integrate the system not only within the enterprise, but also in the business network, uh, or, or again, value network, uh, including your suppliers, subcontractors, and, and customer companies. So for instance, ERP2 systems allowed for automated order handling for your supplier when one of your products in, your, in, in the inventory goes below a threshold value based on some replenishment policies, for instance. Now. Um, the other important direction was the technical architecture of these systems. Now, the earlier ERPs were client server-based, uh, while almost all ERP2 systems uh, had internet uh, or web browser architecture, allowing accessibility through any browser-capable device without the burden of installing something on the client side. Now, we'll discuss about the IS architecture in a separate video. Uh, in lecture two, in fact. Another dimension of improvement in ERP2 were the uh, new specialized modules that were advanced in the functions that, that, that they offer to specific companies operating in certain domains. For instance, uh, the customer relationship management systems. And, and with multiple sub-modules all integrated with the ERP2 system, usually or typically uh, offered to banks or, or, or insurance companies, for instance, that, that really uh, where customer relationship 
is, is, is uh, primary and is very critical. Or another kind of uh, independent system that emerged was a supply chain management system. Or another one would be product life cycle management system for manufacturing companies or e-commerce modules for retailers, for instance. Um, finally, uh, finally, we came to 2010s. The concept of ERPs converged into the, uh, into the term of enterprise information systems or just simply enterprise systems. But at this point, I should note that the term ERP is still used to refer to the enterprise information system uh, in, in many books and papers. You still see that they are used interchangeably. Uh, yet, uh, what to do? What do we get in addition um, in 2010s? From the technical perspective, new IS provisioning approaches such as SAS, we'll discuss about that later on, service um, software as a service, or cloud-based cloud -based systems emerged. Mobile access to enterprise systems were also become very uh, uh, widespread or, or vital even. From functional perspectives, Enterprise system vendors focus their attention on offering light system to SMEs, small and medium enterprises, and enterprise systems that were customized for specific markets or, or business domains like healthcare information systems or, or banking enterprise systems, retail or learning management enterprise systems, and so on, like, like the case that we like the canvas that we use today. In the last recent years, um, uh, the effective use of enormous of data origina originating in, in, in or from such systems has also become very important, hence the concepts of business analytics or, or big data, um, which is still a very ongoing and valid trend. Okay, so that is the history of enterprise systems in a nutshell. Um, See you in another video. Auf Wiedersehen.